here we're going to be covering the developmental stages. So Freud developed his psychosexual stages and we have to remember that Freud was very focused on uh, individuals who were in their you know, early adolescence, infants, he worked with individuals in that one to three, one to six uh, age range. He did work with other individuals, but that was kind of primarily strongly his focus. So let's go through these. As infants, whether we're breastfed or bottle fed, that's how we get our nourishment. And so Freud believed that as long as our basic nourishment needs were met, um, you know, this wouldn't then cause problems later on in life. If our needs were not met, then it would result in an oral fi fixation. And so individuals who are orally fixated might be someone who smokes because you always have to have some something in your mouth or because you, you know, you put something in your mouth when you're smoking. And if we don't achieve this this phase or if we're not our needs aren't met in this phase it results again in that oral fixation but it also res results in deprivation of oral gratification in infancy so later personality problems can include rejecting others or it can include an inability to form intimate relationships the anal stage so again remember kind of this age range you're learning how to uh, go to the bathroom instead of you know still using diapers if this is achieved in terms of the stage um, goal or focus or the task for each stage um, here then if it's achieved then we gain independence uh, we accept personal power we learn to express negative feelings instead of rage aggression kind of think terrible twos that type of thing phallic stage so the basic conflict here or task um, I think Erickson calls it tasks here Freud calls it conflict it centers around the uh, Freud was you know Oedipus complex electric comp electro complex here uh, Freud believed that it focused around the unconscious incestuous desires that a child develops for the parent of the opposite sex so if you think about it if you remember back to your when you were this age like three to six somewhere in there you probably at some point said you know, I want to marry mom when I grow up, or I want to marry dad when I grow up. Um, or one of your siblings might have said that, like, hey, I want to, you know, mom, can I marry you when I grow up? And, you know, parents are like, oh, that's so cute. That's so sweet. No, I'm married to, you know, whoever your significant other, if you, if your parents were married. Freud took this as, um, you know, this almost like competition, like, okay, if uh, for a little boy, it would be the Oedipus complex. If mom is married to dad basically like how do i get dad out of the way to be able to marry mom um, and so it's a boy striving for his mother's love and affection for females it's electra complex it's striving for a father's love and affection and so you know if this stage isn't met in a healthy way or if the conflict isn't resolved obviously it could cause problems later on in life again in terms of relationships Latency, so sexual interests are replaced by interest at school. So as you as you grow up, as you kind of move out, out into school, you move away from the phallic stages and you focus that sexual energy into, all right, let me make friends at school. Let me find healthy social activities such as after school problems, sport, uh, after school activities, um, sports activities, making friends, those types of things genital stage so again this is the old theme from the phallic stage revived if you will but here the energy is directed in instead in, tor in instead of being directed towards um, school activities now it's directed more so towards life activities in general so preparing for and focusing on career activities and other socially acceptable activities such as starting a family uh, developing hobbies developing things that you like to do and then again Freud wasn't really interested in what happened past that and so that's why here on the slide you can see genital stage continues 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 because Freud didn't really develop stages past that he wasn't really focused on or thinking about what happens past a certain age range for him 
So if we were physically in class, we would spend a lot of time having discussion conversations around different topics that we've been covering in this class. And so I decided to put some of the questions from the textbook on the slide and just spend a few minutes thinking about them. Think about where you're at in, in these stages. So we've talked about Freud's stages. Next, we'll talk about Erickson's stages. Erickson's stages of development make a little bit more sense to me at least. So yeah, think about what stage you're at. How would you know that you're at one stage or another? And I've got a couple more questions on the next slide. So here, you know, I, I really like the last question. Um, what are the socio-cultural factors that influence development? So if we think about this, I think it's a really interesting question because, you know, how we used to approach life has very much changed, right? Women used to be the caregiver, used to be stay-at-home moms, and there are still a lot of stay-at-home moms, but now so there's been this large shift as women want their own career. You know, we don't want to necessarily stay at home and be housewives or, or be stay-at-home moms. Some people do, of course, but for a lot of women, there's this drive of, I want my own career, I want to be able to go make my own money, um, and so there's this push for a lot of women, not necessarily everybody, to start a career and then start a family. And so that has pushed for a lot of women, the age that they have children is now much later in life. Um, so that they're able to start their career and kind of get that to a stable point and then say, okay, now I'm ready to have children. Um, and also babies are expensive, let's be honest. And so that is also leading people to say, okay, let me wait to have a stable career. Let me wait until I have a stable career and then I will start a family. So I think it's a very interesting aspect, um, socio-cultural factors that impact where people are at or, or how developmental stages have maybe changed from Freud and Erickson's day. And then lastly, lastly we've got Erickson. So psychosocial stages or developmental stages according to Erickson. Infancy, this is trust versus mistrust. So if caregivers provide physical and emotional needs, then the infant develops a sense of trust. If those needs, those basic needs are not met in infancy, then the infant develops a sense of mistrust towards the world, especially towards interpersonal relationships. Early childhood, so autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is a time of developing autonomy. So think about learning how to crawl, learning how to walk. The basic struggle here is between a sense of self-reliance and sense of self-doubt. The child needs to explore and experiment. So they try and, you know, they try things out, they explore, they need to test limits, make mistakes. If parents are basically helicopter parents or if they do everything for their children instead of developing that sense of independence, children will basically, like that, in that sense of independence or that autonomy will be inhibited and it can basically life or uh, basically hamper their abilities and their um, exploration or their ability to take initiative later on in life which leads into the next stage so initiative versus guilt this stage will basically be hampered if the previous stage needs are not met or tasks are not met the task here is to achieve a sense of competence and initiative. So if children are given that freedom, that ability to be autonomous, to explore, um, then they're going to basically that identity is they're going to view themselves in a positive way as that identity begins to be formed. If they're not allowed to make their own decisions, make their own mistakes, then they'll develop guilt instead of initiative. And then they basically refrain from taking a stance or taking action and other people basically make decisions for them. School age, so this is industry versus inferiority. The child needs to expand understanding of the world and continue to develop appropriate gender role identity and learn the basic skills for success such as developing relationships with others, learning how to get along with others as they go to school and as they're in that school age. Um, attaining personal goals, how to set goals, failure to complete the tasks in this stage can result in inadequacy and feelings of inferiority. Adolescence, so this is identity versus role confusion, a time of transition from childhood to adulthood, 
Um, this is again a time for right teenagers testing limits, seeing what the limits are, trying on new things, right? Teenagers kind of go through this like, do you know, what do I like? What do I not like? Let me explore, let me try different things as they begin to establish their own identity. The major conflict here is establishing that new identity, figuring out what their what they want their life goals to be, what is their career going to be, and really finding meaning in life. What makes life fulfilling for them? Failure to achieve at this level results in a sense of identity um, role confusion. So they're maybe confused about what they want, confused about what their career goals are, um, as opposed to having that strong, solid identity and that strong foundation. Young adulthood, so this is intimacy versus isolation. And here development tasks at this time are to form intimate relationships. So think about you're at that age when historically we have started families, had children. Um, if we're not able to achieve the task at this level, then you know it leads to alienation, it leads to isolation, those types of feelings. Middle age, so Erickson did develop the stages of change beyond uh, young adulthood. So this is generativity versus stagnation. Here again, we're not only focused on our careers, but we're kind of in that middle age where we begin to shift away from what are my needs, what is my career goals, what are my life goals, and we start to focus more on others, such as our community, giving back, helping the next generation are all huge aspects of individuals in this age range or, or tier um, stage. And so w we shift and failure to achieve leads to a lack of a sense of productivity, often leads to some type of psychological stagnation, kind of feeling like, you know, maybe questioning, was my life worth it? Did I really contribute? Um, did I really leave, you know, something that was worthwhile or meaningful? Did I make any type of change to others, you know, to individuals that I know or to my community in, in general? And then later life. So this is integrity versus despair. At this point, if we've achieved ego integrity, if we feel, feel fulfilled, if we've kind of basically achieved the different tasks at the different level, then we look back on life with few regrets. However, if we fail to achieve ego integrity, in this stage, then that leads to feelings of despair, hopelessness, guilt, resentment, and maybe even self-rejection. And those are my references.